Hey guys, it's Emma. Welcome back to my channel. In this video, I want to focus on imbalanced datasets. Imbalanced datasets are common in real-world applications, so being able to deal with it will help you with tackling interview questions as well as dealing with real data science problems. I personally do not have lots of experience on this topic, so I have done some research to prepare for this video. I have found some helpful online resources as well as two books I want to recommend to you, Machine Learning Design Patterns and Designing Machine Learning System. So these two books have great discussions on this topic. If you want to learn how to deal with other practical machine learning problems such as feature engineering, model deployment, hyperparameter tuning, then you might find these two books helpful. So in this video, I'm going to summarize what I have learned through my research and hopefully you will get some ideas on dealing with imbalanced datasets. I will also share all the resources I have found helpful in the video description. Now let's get started. Here's the outline of this lesson. We are going to look at what is an imbalanced dataset, why it causes problems, and finally, we'll look at different approaches to deal with imbalanced datasets. We'll look at three different methods related to data level methods, model level methods, and evaluation metrics. Here are some interview questions to give you a sense of the questions you might encounter in an interview. What's the disadvantage of imbalanced datasets? How to handle imbalanced data? How to deal with imbalanced datasets when the data contains only 1% of the minority class? All right, now let's get started with understanding imbalanced dataset. An imbalanced dataset is a dataset where one or more labels make up the majority of the dataset, leaving far fewer examples of other labels. Imbalanced datasets apply to both classification and regression tasks. In classification, it might happen in binary classification, multi-class classification, and multi-label classification. For example, we have a binary classification problem and 95% of labels is in one class with label 0, and the rest 5% is in the other class with label 1. In a regression problem, it refers to a situation that examples with outlier values that are either much lower or higher than the median or average of the data. For example, we want to build a regression model to predict prices for houses, and for houses, worth over $10 million, they are much rarer than other houses on the market. When we face with imbalanced datasets, the first thing we want to do is to get as many samples for the minority class as possible. However, in many situations, getting more data for the minority class may be impractical or hard to acquire because the data is inherently imbalanced. For example, in a fraud detection problem, the number of fraudulent cases is much less than the number of legitimate cases. Another example is detection of rare diseases. The number of people who have a rare disease such as cancer is much less than the number of people who do not have such a disease. So why does an imbalanced dataset cause problems? Why do we need to care about it? The reason we need to care about class imbalance is that the model cannot learn to predict the minority class well because of class imbalance. Most of the time, the model is only able to learn a simple heuristic, for example, always predict the dominant class, and it might get stuck in a suboptimal solution. An accuracy of over 90% can be misleading because the model may not have predictive power on the real class. Using an example we mentioned earlier, if 95% of labels is in one class, class 0, and the model always predicts an example being in class 0, the model still have over 90% accuracy, but the model does not have any predictive power on examples in class 1. However, the minority class is more important than the majority class in most cases. A wrong prediction on an example of the minority class is more costly than a wrong prediction on an example of the majority class. For example, missing a fraudulent transaction may be 100 times more costly than misclassifying a legitimate example as fraud. Okay, now let's go over different ways to deal with imbalanced datasets. There are data level methods, model level methods, and the metric level methods we could use to deal with imbalanced datasets. Let's go over them one by one. The first method we are going to talk about is the data level method, resampling. Resampling changes the distribution of the training data to reduce the level of class imbalance. One simple method is oversampling or upsampling we simply add more examples to the minority class. We can do this in different ways. 
we can use random oversampling by randomly making copies of the minority class until a ratio is reached. Here's a diagram showing random oversampling. We have an imbalanced data set, and we simply make copies of the minority class so that both classes have the same amount of examples. The downside of this approach is that simply making replicas may make the model overfit to the few examples in the minority class. Because we are not changing the data, we simply duplicate the data for the model to learn from. Another approach to oversample the minority class is to generate synthetic examples. One popular method is called SMOD, Synthetic Minority Oversampling Technique. It creates synthetic examples of the real class by combining original examples. It does this using a nearest neighbors approach. In this diagram, you can see that we use four nearest neighbors to create a new synthetic example for the minority class. And then we add these examples to the training data for the model to learn. The advantage of this approach is that it can prevent the overfitting caused by random oversampling because it does not use original examples. Instead, it uses new examples that are similar to original examples. Another resampling method is undersampling or downsampling. We simply remove examples from the majority class. The first method is random undersampling. The idea is similar to random oversampling. Random undersampling means that we randomly remove samples of the majority class until a ratio is reached. In this diagram, you can see that we remove samples from the majority class of the original dataset, and then the resulting datasets have same amount of examples in both classes. One thing worth noting is that random undersampling may make the resulting dataset too small for a model to learn from. So it only works when we have enough number of examples, at least thousands of examples in the majority class. Another popular undersampling method is called Tomac links. We find pairs of examples from opposite class that are close in proximity and remove the sample of the majority class in each pair. In this diagram, you can see that we find pairs of examples from two different classes, and in each pair, the examples are close to each other. And then we remove the example of the majority class, which is shown as blue dots, in each pair. The model is then trained based on this undersample data of the majority class. The advantage of this method is that it may help make the decision boundary more clear and the model learn the boundary better. But the downside is that the model may not learn from the subtleties of the true decision boundary because we removed examples of the majority class. Now to summarize resampling method, resampling method is a good starting point to deal with imbalanced datasets. But it runs the risk of overfitting the training data if we use oversampling methods and losing important information from removing the data if we use undersampling methods. Now let's move on to some model level methods to deal with imbalanced datasets. The idea of using modeling methods is to make the model more robust to class imbalance without changing the distribution of the training data. One common use method is to update the loss function of the model. Specifically, we design a loss function that penalizes the wrong classification of the minority class more than the wrong classifications of the majority class. It will force the model to treat specific classes with more weight than others during the training. One common user loss is the class balance loss, which simply makes the weight of each class inversely proportional to the number of samples in that class. The weight of class i, wi, is n over ni. n is the total number of examples in the training data, and ni is the number of examples in class i. Here's an example of two classes, class A and B. And we have number of examples is 1,000 for class A and 10 for class B. The weight for class A will be 1.01 versus the weight of class B will be much higher, it's 101. Now, when we calculate the loss caused by example X of class I, we use WI as a multiplier of the regular loss function. Here, loss XJ is a loss when X is misclassified as class J because the true class is I. Other than changing the loss function, we can also choose to select appropriate algorithms to deal with class imbalance problems. Tree-based models work well on tasks involving small and imbalanced datasets. Logistic regression is another algorithm we could consider to handle class imbalance. 
it works relatively well in a standalone manner. We can adjust the probability threshold to improve the accuracy for predicting the minority class. Other than updating the loss function and selecting appropriate algorithms, we could also consider combining multiple techniques together to deal with imbalanced datasets. We talk about resampling methods. So one example is to combine undersampling methods with ensemble learning algorithm. The idea is to use all samples of the minority class and a subset of the majority class to train multiple models and then ensemble those models. For example, we have two classes for binary classification problem. Class A has a thousand examples and class B has a hundred examples. We can divide examples in class A into 10 groups with a hundred examples each. And then we use all examples in class B plus examples in each group of class A to train models. And then we will have 10 classifiers and then we'll ensemble those classifiers to be the final model. Another method is to combine upsampling and update the loss function of the model. We can upsample the majority class until a ratio is reached. And then we calculate the new weight for both classes and then pass a new weight to the loss function of the model. These are two examples to combine multiple techniques to deal with class imbalance problems. But we can definitely try other combinations of techniques. The general idea is to use multiple techniques together to deal with class imbalance. Finally, let's look at choosing the right evaluation metrics to deal with imbalanced datasets. Before we talk about which metrics are appropriate for imbalanced datasets, there's an important thing to keep in mind. We should use ensemble data instead of resemble data to evaluate the model, because using the resemble data will cause the model to overfit the resampled distribution. The test data we are going to use for evaluation should provide an accurate representation of the original data set. As I mentioned earlier, accuracy is misleading when class are imbalanced. The performance of the model on the majority class will dominate the accuracy. So a better choice is to consider using accuracy for each class individually. Basically, we should have accuracy to measure the minority class individually. Other metrics such as precision recall and F score, they are all helpful to measure a model's performance with respect to the positive class in a binary classification problem. We can also consider using precision recall curve to identify a threshold that works best for the dataset. The precision recall curve gives more importance to the positive class. It puts more emphasis on how many predictions the model got right out of the total number it predicted to be positive. That is helpful for dealing with imbalanced datasets. Another common use metric is the area on the curve IUC of the ROC curve. We can tune thresholds to increase recall and decrease false positive rate. However, the problem with the ROC curve is that it treats both classes equally and is less sensitive to model improvement on the minority class. So it's less helpful compared to precision recall curve. All right, those are the metrics we can consider using to measure the model performance for imbalanced datasets. We have talked about data level methods using resampling, model level methods, and choosing the right evaluation metrics to deal with imbalanced datasets. I hope now you have a good idea on why imbalanced datasets cause problems and how to handle them properly. I will see you in the next video.